Hi everybody, thanks for pressing play on the video today. It's Caroline here from CraftyCarolineCreates.com. Today's project is this very cute little Christmas gift box, um, which I've decorated using the Cookie Cutter Christmas stamp set. I'll show you that in a little while. Um, it looks like it is just a beautiful 2x2x2 two by two by two cube box, but if you slide off the um, ribbon and the decoration, and we open it out, oh, we can see that it falls out and inside are two gorgeous um, little trays. So it's just a little a little bit special inside, I think. This would be perfect for so many Christmas presents, you know, jewellery, um, some little handmade chocolates, little biscuits, so many things that you could pop inside there. I think it is just a gorgeous little box. So, um, and the great thing about it is it is actually incredibly easy to make. So let me just slide the ribbon back on, if I can, there we go, and I will show you exactly how I made it. Oh, get it back on, there we go, oh, there we go, beautiful ribbon, and um, beautiful box. So let's start and um, give it a go. Okay, so you are going to need some, to begin with, some real red cardstock and some emerald envy cardstock. Real Red measures three and seven eighths of an inch square. Emerald Envy is eight and a half by six and a quarter. All of the dimensions, as always, are over on my blog, craftycarolinecreates.com. So do pop over there if you don't get a chance to write any of them down. I'm going to start with the Emerald Envy piece, and with the eight and a sorry, it's eight inches by six and a quarter, not eight and a, a half. I said eight inches by six and a quarter with the eight inch piece at the side we are going to score it at two inches four inches and six inches and then we're going to turn it round and score it at two and a sorry two inches and four and a quarter inches okay very simple our little red pieces we are going to score those at three and sorry at one inch on all four sides so these three and seven eighths of an inch and we are scoring them one inch on all four sides okay that's one done and we'll just do the second one so one inch on all four sides Okay, that is all our scoring done, so we will put our scoreboard away. Okay, and let's bring in our bone folder and we'll start off making up our box. I'm just going to fold and burnish quickly along those score lines that we have already made. Then what we are going to do is we are going to cut up um, each of the score lines we made at two inch intervals along the long side. Okay, so cut those up on both sides. Okay, and then on one of those, on one side, we're going to cut off the two of them, so we just cut those off, one, two, like that, okay, and then you want to cut off, oops, just nip that a little bit, let me neaten that up, there we go, and then on the other side you want to cut off the opposite two um, flaps, one, two, okay, then we want to take the what will be the, the, the square that's closest to the middle and just notch that one out again on both of your sides. One and two. Okay. Then it's very easy to fold this up. We are going to put some fuse on the two bits that we just notched out. And then we're going to fold up our box just to make those two sections fold in on each other. Just, 
Oh no, I pressed it down too early. Oh, let's see if I can peel this apart. Fuse is a great adhesive, but you just have to be careful that you're not pressing down too early, okay? So you get that sort of shape, and you can see already how that then folds up to make our gift box, okay? So we need to make our little drawers to go inside. So we are gonna, again, this is the easiest box you will ever make, as you'll see, fold up and score along those, and burnish along those score lines. And then we are just going to chop up on four corners like this. And then just quickly notch those out. Notch, 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 and notch. Okay, and again, you can just those off like that. Okay. And then a bit of fuse on the underside of these pieces. Okay, and then we can fold those up. And that is your, um, your box, your, what is going to be your drawer. So I'll just do this one. I should have probably made one up in advance, but I didn't. So I'll just do this one really quickly for you. Okay, now I'm so inspired by the new catalogue. I know a lot of you are loving it as well. If you haven't already got a copy, do pop over to my blog, um, craftycarolinecreates.com, and you can request one there. I am overflowing with ideas. I have so many videos um, and projects ready to share with you that for the next few weeks, I'm actually going to be sharing two videos a week. So do tune in on both a Friday and a Tuesday um, for the next few weeks where I will also be showing sharing some projects because I am, as I said, so inspired by the new catalogue. It is gorgeous and I know most of you feel very much the same way. So I'm just folding up the second box like that. Okay. So we have our two little identical little trays. Okay. Now we need to attach our trays um, onto our box. So this is going to be our top and this is going to be our bottom, but it doesn't matter if you flip them round. But all you need to remember is that the, obviously if you stick this box at the top, you can't get into it. So this box needs to go at the bottom, um, whichever side is going to be your top, with obviously the hole facing up. So I'm just going to put some Tombow along oops there we go tumble along two sides of my box the little red box that is and then I'm just going to with the tumble obviously down just press that and line it up with the two edges of my box okay just give that a second to dry can you see I'm just a fraction of a millimeter um, above that the edge of my cardstock there and again a little tiny bit on the side there okay and then we're just going to do the same with this box but obviously on the other side so if I flip it round you can see a bit better oh, don't put your finger in the tombow you've just applied so it just makes everything sticky and again just line that up at the bottom and at the side give that a second oh don't squish it back either give that a second to dry the good thing about using tombow is it does give you that few seconds of wibble room so you can make sure it's positioned perfectly unlike fuse which as we saw earlier sticks pretty much permanently as soon as you touch anything okay i think i've had a bit too much coffee this morning and i actually had a really good night's sleep with the children so i feel amazing today so you can see that that, that folds up perfectly like that now in order to keep it closed tightly we do need to use some beautiful ribbon and I am going to use what is one of the most gorgeous ribbons Stamping Up have done in a little while. This is in real red um, and it is called the Stitched Edged Ribbon and look how beautiful that is and it's a really good thickness. It's, um, I think it's nearly two inches, yeah, three quarters of an inch wide, so nearly two centimetres wide and it's beautiful. So I'm just going to pull off some of this and wrap it around my box 
and then we can tie that off in just a flat knot just make sure your box is closed before you do this so that you get um have i done that the right way yes i have so you get your box nicely closed and then just now this is going to be a belly band that will slide off so just make sure it's it's neat and it's tight but not too tight so that you can slide it on and off to open your box okay so just going to pull that tight like that some scissors to trim off my tails now you can obviously keep these as long or as short as you want i think about that sort of length it looks lovely Okay, and now for the decoration, we are going to use the gorgeous, as I said earlier, Kuka Kuti Christmas stamp set and the matching punch. And I just love this reindeer. So I've already mounted him up. Um, and I have some Sahara sand cardstock. And I did have somewhere a full mat because it's a photopolymer stamp set. So we want to try and use a full mat, but I can't find it, so we will go without it. Um, and we're going to use some early expresso ink. So let's ink up our reindeer and stamp him down. Perfect. Okay. And I'm also going to clean him off. And on a scrap of um, Whisper White cardstock, I'm going to stamp him again using real red ink this time. And what I'm interested in this time is just his little nose. So I'm just going to then very quickly fussy cut out his nose using my super sharp paper snips. Oh, I'm not a great fussy cutter. I love punches and dies because it makes it easier to put out, but I think it's worth it to do it in this case to cut out his little nose. There we go. I'll just save that for a second, put my ink away before I get messy. And I've stamped him upside down. Scissors, scissors, where are you? They've lost my scissors. Oh, right, too much coffee. Don't fill on the video after a lot of coffee, Caroline. Go a little bit crazy. Okay, so I'm just going to pop him into my punch, line him up nicely. You can see how that works. A little bit more this way. If you give yourself a little bit more cardstock, you will make it a lot easier on yourself. I made it a bit hard. Punch him out. There we go. You will get some other lovely bits popping out as well, but you can save them to use on something else. Then his little nose that I made, I'm just going to pop that up on half a dimensional. Oh, what have I done with my proper scissors? How can I lose them on such a small desk? Anyway, I seem to have lost my um, scissors, so... They must be hiding underneath something, I hope. So let's pop that there. And we can pop that on there. Oh, sticking to myself now. Not concentrating, I'm looking for my scissors out of the corner of my eye. So there we go, he's now got a beautiful red nose. A couple of dimensionals on his back. Down the centre. You can see how it's a gingerbread man when you put that punch the other way around, can't you? Um, peel those off. There we go. And let's straighten our ribbon up, put it in the middle. And we're just going to stick this onto the ribbon itself, not onto the box. So that it will come off when you slide off the ribbon. It's not very central. There we go. That's better. Beautiful. And for my sentiment, I've actually used one of the sentiments in the Pika Cut of Christmas. I've used the word Merry Christmas from this bigger um this bigger set, this bigger sentiment here. And the way I've done that is again with this piece of scrap of whisper white. Okay. And I've used the real red marker from Stamping Up, which allows me if you haven't seen these before, one end is a thin marker that you'd use for writing and the other is a brush tip which is great for using on stamps. Stamping up do now in the Christmas catalogue, you can buy just a real red marker together with a um, crumb cake marker rather than having to buy the whole pack of um, every colour of marker that we do. So it's a really good way of trying out um, the markers and it really does allow your sentiments to become a lot more versatile 
because you can use just a section of it. So what I've done is use the brush tip just to colour in the Merry Christmas section of the stamp set, of the sentiment. I'm going to give it a bit of a huff just to make sure it's nice and moist and then I can just stamp that down and as you can see I just get the word the sentiment Merry Christmas I don't get any of the other words on there I have then punched that out using the word window punch which has also vanished here it is this is it's not called word window it's something else I'll look on my blog and I'll put on my blog exactly what this punch is called so I'm just gonna punch that out offsetting it very slightly so it's was the end of the punch. Then I'm going to take a scrap of real red and punch it up a blank one in real red. Again using half a dimensional would be useful if I'd kept the one from earlier but I didn't so I'll get another half a dimensional because you don't want to really see it sticking out from behind. I'm just going to pop that down towards the bottom end of my real red and then I'm just going to offset so let's try and line them up at one end but offset them at the other so you can just see that little flash of real red poking out from behind it taking my hole punch this is my one eighth of an inch hole punch and I'm just going to punch a hole in the end of both like that okay I'm stuck come on there we go and I'm just going to use a lovely little bit of this gold baker's twine which is another new product from the new catalogue and thread that through the hole let's just thread a little bit let me just trim that off still can't see where my scissors have gone and then you can thread that through the hole oh, just thought it would be lovely you could also put a little jingle bell couldn't you one of those cute little jingle bells attached to this as well that would look gorgeous and then I'm just going to thread that underneath my knot there we go pull this taut so it sticks out there we go oh worked so well on the prototype and then I get all fingers and thumbs on camera tuck that underneath there we go and then you can tie off your twine in a knot so you just get a little flash of that gold on top there we go trim those edges try not to use your paper snips but mine seem to have disappeared and there we go two really cute little boxes that pack a beautiful surprise inside. I hope you enjoyed them and you give it a go. If you'd like to buy any products, including cookie cutter Christmas, you can do that via my website, craftycarolinecreates.com. Thanks for watching and I will see you again another time, hopefully with a little bit less coffee. Thanks, bye bye.